Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. And we can load them all up nice and easy. Right. I do apologise to the traditionalists among us who would like to see me doing this with a tractor and loader or a load all or a wheel loader or anything even remotely similar. Um, but... No. Don't want to. Have no intention of it. It's not something that I want to do in the slightest because too much like hard work. It is just too much like hard work to go and do that. Uh, because of the angle of the field, the bales don't load up square. And this is something that bales do anyway. Like if you're running around like a lunatic with the auto load. They don't quite sit square every time, and you're not going to get every bale sitting right. So you end up, it's quite often, if they're not loading completely right for you, it's quite often a good idea to find a level place in the field to unload and then reload them again if you are running out of space. Because it'll get to the point where it'll just say, no, I can't put any more bales in, I don't have any more space. And you'll get bits like that where the straps are kind of... Um, holding the bale up in the air in a floaty type position. You can just cure that by temporarily removing the straps, allowing all of the bales to settle, and then place them back on again before you go shunting, uh, shunting, ra racing off. Yeah, we're not shunting off, we're racing off. Um, also, going slow can also help, but it's, it's mostly the angle of the field. Did you see that? Like, it is not lined up. If you're on a hill... Because of the way the autoload works, it does struggle a little bit with it. But it's a minor detail as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's kind of struggling a little bit. So we'll put all of that back on and then we will close the curtain. And apparently it does shunt the bale around a little bit in there. You know what? I'm going to take the curtain off again because that and I'm also going to just remove those straps because that bale there seems to be struggling a bit so I'll close the sides we'll see what that bale does now we can't see it right straps back on again now we'll hope hopefully that will hold in place. So we've got 176,000 litres of hay. The sheep pen takes something like 60,000 litres of hay. We'll run this over and then we will put in as much as we can. And we will also buy as many sheep as we can. I want adult sheep. I'm not going to bother buying lambs. I want them being. Pro I want them producing as quickly as possible. Um, that's kind of my aim now, is to get things functioning so we can at least see how things work out in here. Um, so we bring you over here. Now the key to this, you don't have to. Obviously, we don't have to have the sides. The curtain side are open to do this. But I'm going to do it because I think it's just nice to be able to see what's going on. And also, oh, he is clipping the roof there, but he's not actually causing any major issues. Oh, he's going to cause issues now. Okay. Uh, the other thing that he is doing is not liking that. Right. In which case, then, we'll do it option B. It doesn't seem to want to unload it from that point. It's still 176,000. So I take the straps off, and then I'm going to take... I'm going to drop the bales down there for a minute. And move you out of the way. And then we'll get our tractor with the front loader, and we'll bring that one down, and we'll use that. And I can use the super strength to chuck the bales in and after this I probably will start doing that but I will just give a slight nod in the direction of realism by using front loader to do it the first time so let's lower the front weight down there and that will become a back weight let's bring you around like that and 
there. Uh, back round here. So, the front weight has now become a back weight, and I'm going to get that one on. So, I've got a bucket on here, which I was using for something. The sugar beet, I think. Or, or whatever, the, the, the grain going into the, the thing up there, um, which I'm not too concerned about at the moment. So, I'm going to unhitch that bucket there. Do I... Oh, it would be a good idea if we actually go and have a look at what we've got. Uh... Front load of tools. I've got a pallet fork. Which is it. Pallet fork and a bucket. They use the pallet fork. The pallet fork, you can actually balance the bales fairly well and then drag them around. Just got to find the thing. Where on earth is the pallet fork? Uh, was it over this side when I was hitching it all up? I think it was. You know, I've got absolutely no idea where this pallet fork might be hidden away. It's got to be in one of these sheds here somewhere. I have found it. And we also have another front loader attachment right there. So we had one with a bucket, and we got one with this as well. But that seems like a smaller one. Try and get that onto... Oh, there we go. Look, see, I can do it just like that. Boom. Nice. Right, let's go and take you down the road to... I'm going to just lift that up so that I can see underneath. Run you down the road to the sheep pen, and then we can put hay in for the future sheep. And then once we've done that, we'll probably just use auto load trailers and super strength because I don't want to be doing this every time this is a little bit tedious to go and do every single time uh, I mean yeah we'll we'll leave the loader and the pallet forks down there for now and till we need it for something else but um, yeah I still don't want to be messing around with the front loader all the time it just ends up getting irritating right Bring you down here. And no, I'll turn the beacon off. And now, if we bring actually, I'm gonna line that up a bit first. Let's see if we can move three bales at once. Apparently we cannot. Although it seems that you can use the pallet forks a bit like a normal um, bale spike, which I didn't actually realise. I was thinking I'd have to stick the pallet fork in underneath rather than doing it any other way. Right, if this doesn't allow me to put bales in, I'm going to be... Ah, okay, apparently I'm not going to be annoyed. It's okay, we can just put them in like that. So we can at least do that bit, but they've got to go down with the ground. But yeah, the, the pallet forks do actually work like a regular bale spike, which I didn't realise they would. So we'll start dropping a few of these in. Ah, you've got to get the pallet fork in more of the middle of the bale. Like, putting it low down apparently doesn't like that. So that's what we will aim to do. And, I mean, yeah, we've got like uh, 176,000 litres of hay in this one, and I think you can put uh, 60,000 litres into the pen there. So we drop that down, and, oh, it's left a magic floating bale. We'll come back to that one. So I might just leave like a couple of extra bales just here on the front. I do that quite frequently. Because if you dump, like, an extra couple of bales there, it basically means you've got a little bit more storage on the front there, and you, you can hold that. See, that one there, it seems that the pen is now full. So if I was to take a couple more bales, so that gives us four bales extra on the front. Put that in there like that. There we go. So we've got four bales extra in there. Let's jump out and have a look. So, 
They are 8,000 each. That one's 8,000. That one's 4,848 liters. And that gives us 60,000 in total in here. And we have, we could potentially have 320 animals in here. This is a dairy sheep pen. So wh what do we do with the milk once we've got the milk? Like if, if you go and have a look in here, we can, well, we can just sell the milk as it is. There's South Distribution Center, Purinella, and Distribution Center. So we can just go and sell the milk just as it is. We don't actually have to um, do anything else with it. Now, in theory, we've got good times and bad times of the year. But it's milk, so kind of like the stuff that comes out of our greenhouses. We're not going to want to do that. We would want to load up and take it away and sell it as as it's produced kind of every month. I mean, yeah, we won't do it every month. We'll probably do it every uh, two or three months like we do with the other stuff, with, with the, the that stuff from the greenhouses. But yeah, you, you get the idea. So I was going to do, we, we got these, the Swiss black ones, the Asaf. Um, the sheep will generate wool or milk. And then the Castilian right here. So I don't know which one is better. Depending on the state, oh, on the stable you choose, a sheep will generate wool or milk. So I'm assuming that this Castilian, Castilian sounds something Spanish. I'm not quite sure what, but it does definitely sound like it's more Spanish. So this is the one that I'm going to go with. This is the breed of sheep. I think I've already um, talked about it previously. I probably have and then forgotten all about it. So this is the one that we're going to go with. I'm just going to basically buy as many as we have. We've got 80,000. We've got 80,253. So I'm going to buy a good chunk of sheep right now. We've only got 60,000 litres of hay. I'm... Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, of course, you can only go up to 60 on this. That's 46,000. Ah. All right, well, we'll buy that. So there's 60 of them. And then... I'm kind of thinking if we can... Can we buy 40 sheep? Can we afford 40? 30,000. That's only going to leave us a few thousand left over, but uh, I want to do this because um, right there, we now have exactly 100 sheep. I feel that 100 sheep is a good number. That's, that's a good uh, starting off point. There's, there's a good point... Uh, a good jumping off point to start negotiations. There we go. We've got our new sheep. The tractor right here. I'm going to leave the front loader down here. Sort of a nod towards um, potential realism. We've got the pallet forks here that we're using for loading up the sheep's milk and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, yes. We all know that it, it, it's just top secret. But we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to mention it. I'll just leave the front weight on the back for a minute. And I'll drive this one back up. And then I need to come back and load the hay. And go and take that back to our shed. Let's spin this bad boy around. I'm... We'll see how quickly the sheep use up the milk. Uh, not the milk, the, the water. Because at the moment we have got a water tanker. It's whether or not we're going to need to buy another one. That, that's kind of something that we're going to have to look out for. Why are you not loading the other two? It's weird the way it does this. Sometimes just flat out refuses to load a bale for, for whatever reason. Oh, now it's taken it. Didn't like it. it just, just something about the bale it, it didn't like there for some strange reason. Don't know why. But that's how it is. I'm leaving the side of the curtain off and we're going to race back up to the top and take this one to the shed. And then we will unload them at our storage shed and... I mean, yes, we probably shouldn't be racing around like this with the curtains open. I don't think it does it a lot of good. Uh, I mean, what's a 35,000 euro curtain cider between friends, eh? Let's bring you up around here. And... Okay, so we're going to need to... We can bring it up to this point like this, and then I can 
unload it there. So I've been able to. Wonder what I, I wonder what happened then for a minute. I, I jumped out there. Right. So we're also we're going to want to put the rest of these bales in. Um, if I go there and we, we've run down and we basically we've got our tractor to do this. There we go. Tractor did that. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. The, the, the tractor did that uh, 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 and also that. Right. I now have square bale hay, 8,000 litres. We've got 11 bales in there. So we've got 88,000 litres of hay in there. And if we go and have a look in this bit, and we go there, we've now got 60,000 litres of grass in there. There's 320 animals that can go in here. So I don't know how long that will last once the whole thing fills up. These animals should start producing food pretty quickly. They're not going to start reproducing. Obviously, the health at the moment is on zero, so the sheep's milk will be zero, but that's because they're new animals. And we've got to wait until um, that sort of fills up. But it does fill up a little bit every hour while they've got food. Um, and that will take them up to 80%, which is they've got to be 85% in order to start reproduction at as you can see from... Oh, actually, the health stays zero until this is all filled up. Okay, ignore the health. But the reproduction thing, that's not going to start. We should be getting sheep's milk. That'll be fine. But we can't get anything else because of the, the, the protein right in there. So the productivity will go up to maximum. We need the protein food. That's going to be our next thing. Right, let's uh, just bring you back up here like that uh, I'm going to stop you there one thing that I almost forgot about but I have just remembered now is we need to put some fertilizer on that grass field we have to have fertilizer on a grass field or it's not going to produce quite as well so if we go through to soil composition over here there is our that's not our grass field there's our grass field all the way over there this field here needs to be plowed this one up here needs lime uh they need some stuff on once they've grown i've got wheat and barley in here i can't you know i genuinely can't remember anything else of what i said i was going to plant uh, i think it was just the wheat and the barley that we had to worry about then um the others are going to be spring crops and it was sunflowers was going to go somewhere i you know i genuinely can't remember um it doesn't really matter what does matter is that we've basically the, the, the jobs are being done and we're, we're getting stuff on the fields and getting stuff planted um as has been pointed out to me i have this tendency of laying out plans and then forgetting them by the following week and yes that is something that I do. I, I, I'm not going to deny this. I, I'm not going to try to pretend that it's not something that I do. Uh, I weeded that lot. Wait. Hmm. Um. Can I put fertilizer on there straight away? Let me just do that a second. Oh, I also need to fertilize these. I completely forgot all about that as well. Right, so I've got to put fertilizer on everything. Let's slow time down to one time speed. I need to just run a coat of fertilizer across all of our fields. This is embarrassing. Forgot about that. I mean, I don't technically have to do the crop fields. I can leave those until next month because um, like, they'll still be in growth stages so that would be absolutely fine so i don't need to worry about the crop field i do need to do the grass field because i've got the mod that allows you to cut the grass at any time um so if we wait until november the grass is actually ready to cut again and that means it won't accept fertilizer so this one downside to that mod is that you do have to go and get the fertilizer spread on your field really really quickly after you've done a grass cut now i'm keeping close to this side because when you turn around the corner it kind of changes the angle and 
messes it up a little bit. Which takes a bit of time. There we go. Let's bring you one round like that. All right. That's looking good. I'll just uh, finish up this field a second. And we're lit up like a Christmas tree. We have a field all finished. So, actually, we need to just have sensible lights while we go down the road and put our beacons on. That job is all finished. Um, yeah, I've got two more lots of fertilizer that I need to put on the fields at the moment. But it's not, like, a, a major thing that we need to worry about. I've got another plowing job that I need to go and do, so that's one that we'll have to get going with at some point. Um, the plowing that we have there to do on this field in here, we'll start that one when we're doing our sugar beet harvest as well. So I've, I'll be coming in here to grab the sugar beet trailer. And then we'll get another tractor in here, the one with the plow on it already. And that one can just get into this field and get started on there. And then the third tractor can hook on the fertilizer spinner and go up to the other crop fields and start putting a bit of fertilizer up there. We're also going to be wanting to do some work with putting lime on the fields. So we've got quite a lot of different things that we want to do. Um, I did ask you previously if you thought that I should um, just remove the collisions off of that one there and that one down there just to make it a little bit easier for us to do the game um, and uh, work our way around that. And the feedback I got was, yeah, you, you don't care if I remove the collisions on that and we can just sort of go straight through it as though it's a field. But uh, it's going to be grass in there anyway once we've done this harvest. 3,000 in vehicle leasing costs. We're now on minus 2,315 euros because I spent a boatload of money on sheep. Which means that we have no money to start things off. Now, I've got some eggs over there. It is November now. So we're one month away from our next roll of the um, bad news table. It only ever seems to be bad news for us at the moment, doesn't it? We've got... This field is now ready to harvest, and then everything else is basically uh, preparing for next year's planting. So these two here, they need to have fertilizer put on them, and then they're done with. Don't need to worry about them anymore. That one's going to need plowing. Um, that one's plowed. This one here will want plowing when we're done, and we'll plant this one with grass. So that one will be all tickety-boo. Uh, let's have a look in here. We've got 1,224 pieces of eggs in there. This one, we've got 207 litres for sheep's milk. So there's not a lot of sheep's milk there at the moment. I don't know if there's anything out the front. Um, you know what would be good is if we were to take a machine and put it down by the sheep. Because then, when I do my tab 2 things, I can tab straight to the sheep. So if I use this one as our sheep um, jump point, we can jump down to this one and then we can see the sheep. This is a really, really light machine. It, it weighs practically nothing. You could almost pick the thing up with your hand. So we're going to take a shortcut down across this field. Even though it's been cultivated, having this one drive over it is really not going to make a lot of difference. As long as it can actually drive over the cultivated surface of the field, it'll be absolute tickety-boo. There'll be no problems with it at all. So you carry on down around here, and we can see our sheep and see if they've actually produced a full pallet of milk. And there is a churn down there. I don't think that's a full pallet. I think that's a part pallet. Um, but what I'll do is if I bring this one over here like this and I'll leave it on the outskirts of the shed there. So then when I jump on, I got a clear view of the sheep over here. So that is the 208 litres of milk that we've already got on there. And then I'm not going to need to worry about the rest of it. So overnight we've had 800 liters of water disappear already okay i don't like the water consumption bit i freely admit that i don't like that water consumption bit so you here have have i got stuff that i can sell 
I need to I need to generate some money. Right, in here I've got a pallet uh two pallets of eggs. We've got some melons, we've got some watermelons, we've got a bit of red lettuce as well. So we've got a few pallets of things that we could take and sell there. It is November. I think eggs now at this time of year, I think this is when eggs are worth the most. Uh I'm looking on the wrong list right there. Um So we've got chickpeas and we've got lentils. They were both uh, they're both December. That they're, they're December that their best prices are. I did have a mod that... No, I haven't got the mod on this. Yeah. I've got a mod somewhere, but I haven't got it on this playthrough that shows... It gives you the, the best time of year to sell stuff and so on. Um, the chickpeas and the lentils, they need to wait. They're both cash crops. Um, we'll hold on to those for a little bit longer. These here, again, January is the best time for the red lettuce. So we were holding those, weren't we? Um, the watermelon, January, November here, way down on the price. Melons, January. Everything is January. Right, they're, they're all January. The, the eggs, however, pretty sure the eggs, it's now. Let's have a look. November. Yeah, eggs right now is as good as we're going to get. Distribution center is the best place to get for is the best place to go for eggs and we want to do them here so what i'm going to do is rather than trying to shunt something in i'm just going to bring the eggs out over here because you can do that you can pick the eggs up and move them by hand um it, 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 technically if you don't do it in game yeah that that, that that's fine but you, you can just pick stuff up and move it around by hand it, it, in real life uh, you, you wouldn't pick up the whole pallet you, you move it a bit to a time so that, that's quite an acceptable thing to go and do we don't have any pallets of stuff up here to sell so the profitable thing is the eggs and we've got three pallets and those three pallets are 15 50 two in the distribution center which i think is actually the one down in town isn't it that's uh, that one there right so that's pretty close by we'll take the fast actually you know what we can go even faster than that we can take this one so i will have that one there we will set this to Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.